Hi everyone. So today we're going to be customizing one of these seven mini backpacks. I also have wallets that I need to customize as well. You'll notice that everything has already been prepped with leather paint so we can just jump into it. We're going to customize this backpack today. So here's our project bag for today and I'll insert a photo of how this bag originally looked. In case you're wondering if I use new or old bags for my project, I actually use new bags that I find on sale because I purchased them with the specific intent of creating the perfect theme bag that I've been wanting, but that lounge toy hasn't created. You can also use customizing as a great way to give new life to a used bag that you may have lying around. As far as our wallet, I actually got it from Rue 21 and I only paid $4 per wallet and they are really good quality. These are a couple that they currently have on sale as of today when I'm filming this video. And our fabric for today is Meet the Robinsons. <laughs> it's such an underrated Disney movie. Okay, let's get customizing. So these steps we're just going to zoom on through because we've talked about them in a previous video. I'll leave the links in the description below. Keep in mind that that metal plaque will be covering up some of your characters, so plan your layout accordingly. And we are keeping that plate as is because even though it's a Disney Parks bag, Meet the Robinsons is Disney, so if so facto, they go together. Cutting the fabric for a mini backpack's front pocket is no different than any other panel. Just give yourself that one to two inches room for error and for when we treat the fabric, you're gonna do the same with the top of the pocket as well. Now with side pockets, remember you're going to have to fold the fabric into the pocket itself, so take this into account when cutting. The fabric's easily glued onto the white vinyl part. You can get it to stick to that light blue lining, but I find it more difficult to get it to lay flat. So this inside pocket top piece is pretty self-explanatory. You can use the width of your side pocket as a guide when cutting your fabric for this part and just go from there. Honestly, I'm only including this part so I can show you I'm putting Tiny the T-Rex in the center, just so I can play this clip. Since this video is pretty in-depth and it's going to end up being longer than I expected, I'm going to separately upload the matching customized wallet in its own short video where just music plays, so feel free to check that out if you'd like. I just wanted to quickly point out that you want to keep working with the Odie coat until those gel lines that you see in this part disappear. You don't want them to dry or they will remain on your fabric. I haven't slept in eight days! To begin assembling our mini backpack, I'm going to start off with the front pocket. Once I have the fabric where I want it, I'll start by holding one side of the fabric down, I'll lift up the other side and start laying down my glue while smoothing it out with my spatula. I'll repeat this with the other side. I'm going to concentrate on the top of the front pocket where those two seams meet and I'm going to create a guideline indent with my spatula. From there I'm going to cut the fabric about one to two millimeters away from that indent line so I have the proper amount of fabric when it comes to tucking. I'm going to do this across the whole top. Next we're going to put our glue down and we want to ensure that it gets into the seam as you see in this close up. Taking a dental pick, we're going to start tucking our fabric into that seam. And if you find that when you're tucking, you seem to have a slight bubble in your fabric near the seam you're working on, just keep tucking back and forth while gently pushing the fabric either with your finger or the dental pick and keep going until it's smooth. Onto the sides of the front pocket, indent along the seam, cut, glue, and tuck. The corners may seem intimidating, but it's actually easier than you think. Imagine wrapping a gift. We're going to follow the bag's corner seam and fold the fabric in on itself so that it mimics it.
Remember for this part, you wanna get glue on any part of the fabric that will be folding in on itself so that it stays put. Once you have that corner folded and glued down, you'll then tuck the fabric into its seams. These same steps will be taken for the other side of the pocket as well as that smaller top panel of the pocket. So I'm just gonna let the video play on. I just wanted to point out one of the reasons why I love cotton lycra. This side was a bit too short for me to work with, so I just gently pull on it to stretch it. Now we're good to go. So as far as the top of the back goes, the easiest way I found to lay out the fabric is to just jump right in to laying the glue down on that bottom line and begin tucking the fabric in. Then once the bottom position's set, I'll trim around the top, glue some more, and finish tucking. Every panel of this bag will basically have the same steps. The main instruction I wanna point out when it comes to the side pockets is cut the top of the fabric so that way it's gonna lay on the white vinyl material, not the blue lining. I personally like to cut a small triangle portion off of the sides. You don't have to do this, but I do it because I find it easier when it comes to folding the fabric in. If I don't, I find it tends to bunch up. It's just a personal preference.
When it comes to this inside pocket area, I like to cut the fabric actually on the indent line itself. I find between how the fabric stretches and it's such a small area, it just seems to work out better. Cut across giving yourself the right amount of fabric to glue on the white vinyl part but also enough so you have it to tuck into the seam. Again for the part that's going to be on the inside of the pocket, I like to cut a small triangle out for convenience. Inside the pocket, I'll fold the fabric while I start laying glue onto one half of the bag. I'll then unroll the fabric out, press down to smooth, and then I'll begin tucking. I'll then go back and repeat this for the other side. Finally onto the main front panel. I like to focus on either side of the top part first. We'll follow our typical steps until we tackle the metal plate. I'll start by cutting a hole to expose the metal plate and then I'll continue to cut little by little around the plate's perimeter. I'll then use my spatula in between the seams to make an indent for the final cut. After that, we'll lay the glue down and then we'll start tucking. Now we're going to repeat these steps on the other side and the bottom section. This is probably the number one area where the phrase practice makes perfect holds true meaning. I'll start by cutting a small hole in the center of the pocket. Since I already made an indent on the fabric where the front panel meets the pocket's top, I'll start cutting upwards, stopping before I get to our indent. Next, we'll start cutting across about one to two millimeters away from our indent line. It's always better to cut a little bit at a time, especially in this area. Once the fabric is cut to our liking, we'll then start gluing and tucking. In regards to the front panel borders, I always focus on the pocket side first. I'll indent where the edges meet, then trim the fabric while giving myself excess since sometimes the fabric likes to move around on this part, so it's always good to have extra. If anyone who's watching this plans to make their own bag after watching my videos, I would love to know. Let me know in the comments below. So I just wanted to point out that I'll stop about an inch or two away from the bottom of the pocket because as a preference, I like to complete the sides of the front panel first before moving ahead to the bottom and you'll see why in a little bit. finally made it to the bottom. 
Now, because this section's so small, I'm actually gonna start out with gluing the fabric down first. That way it stays put. I'll go back and trim off the excess, and then I'll do my indent, trim more, and then start tucking. We're going to repeat those steps on the other side, and I just wanna point out why I saved the bottom for last. For some reason, maybe in the way the fabric lays or how I work with it, but every single bag I've ever done always has extra fabric when it comes to the bottom part. The good news is it's a small area and we're going to cut and mend the two parts together. You'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. And yes, this is a trust the process situation. So I like to find a spot with an empty space to be removed. I'll then cut as close to a character as possible, in this case, Wilbur's leg. The idea is to find a spot that we can mend the two pieces together without having it to be super noticeable. Again, trust the process. Now let's finish up the bag. We'll circle back to this so you can see the final result. Looks pretty good to me. Now with that, we are done. So let's take a look at our bag. All right, here it is. What do you all think? Personally, I think it's excellent. All right, that's it for our video today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And in the description below will be the link to the customized wallet short video. Thanks again, guys. Bye. Bye. Goodbye, son. Thanks again for everything.